G'day everyone, Brian here. Here you go. So this is going to be a brief history of Japanese whiskey, the beginning part one. And this is going to be on Shinjiro Tori of some Tori fame. And this is a summary folks. You know, it's not a deep dive or anything else like that. Different sources have slightly different nuances on some of this. But a lot of it can be just found on Suntory's website in a timeline. I'll put links to a couple of references, a couple of books and stuff like that, and the timeline. And no matter what anyone says, there is no huge comprehensive whiskey history of Japanese whiskey. If it would, it'd be like 10 volumes that thick, but it doesn't exist. So everyone's kind of summarizing as well. This is an even briefer summary at the start. So before I get into Shinjiro Tori and Suntory, they weren't the first company to get a license to distill whiskey in Japan. That was actually the small white oak distillery and that was given in 1919 and they did some experimental runs and stuff like that. Mainly they made sake, it wasn't considered to be full blown production or anything else like that and that's why Suntory is considered to be the first proper Japanese whiskey product made in the Scottish tradition. And even today white oak still only do a couple of production runs a year and some of you may have tried them and they're very good at experimenting they do a lot of different cast stuff for a little distillery they experiment a lot with cast and stuff like that as well so anyway back to Shinjiro Tori so he was born in Osaka in 1879 he apprenticed at a drug wholesale store owned by his uncle the company started manufacturing spirits and beer and this is where Shinjiro Tori started to learn about the alcohol business he also learned marketing when apprenticing at his uncle's paint and dye store. Around the age of 20, obviously ambitious, Shinjiro started his first business venture importing wines from Spain. Now this is where I personally believe he got that intimate knowledge of casts which make, like Spanish oak casts, which make Suntory Spanish oak cast mature whiskey so lauded these days in general. So that's just my two cents, that's what I believe, those connections, a long history of Spanish wine and Spanish oak casts. After some trial and error, Tori had a product which he called Akadama Port Wine, and then they still sell that today, some Tori. It was a sweet type wine. It became incredibly successful and it was the foundation of his further business ventures, including the eventual production of whiskey. So it was around 1920 that Tori started formulating his plan to make homegrown Japanese whiskey in the Scottish style. But he didn't have the production expertise himself. Now he needed someone versed in Scottish style whiskey production. There's luck or kismet, whatever you want to call it, but have it. He had an, a, um, an acquaintance had just returned from Scotland where he had studied the art of whiskey distilling at several different distilleries or distillers. This was Masataka Takatsuru of Nikafei, Yoichi Nibikyo. Now one of the misunderstandings I've heard from some people is that it was Tori who sent Takatsuru to Scotland. But it wasn't in fact Takatsuru was working for Osaka based alcohol, production, uh, alcohol producers Setsu Shuzo was the name of the company. They also had designs on producing homegrown Japanese whiskey, but on his return from Scotland, Takatsuru found that due to the prevailing economic conditions in Japan, Setsu Shuzo had shelved its plans to start whiskey production. Initially, Takatsuru sought to start his own whiskey distillery, then due to the same economic conditions, he wasn't able to. And I would be remiss, especially for Mars fans out there like myself, that Kichiro Iwai, and I'll put the spelling up, of Mars Whiskey fame, who was a manager at Setsu Shuzo at the time, was instrumental in sending Takatsuru to Scotland. And Ho Mars, Hombo Shuzo, also learned the art of whiskey production from, it is said, Takatsuru's original notes from the time he was in Scotland. Anyway, Takatsuru was offered a 10-year contract to work for Shinjiro Tori. Um, and to build and operate the now famous Yamazaki distillery which was opened in 1923 and production started in 1924. So there we go, we've got 100 years now of Japanese whiskey 
Japanese whiskey production. So the first truly Japanese whiskey producer, Yamazaki, released in 1929, was called Shiro Fuda, and again I'll put the spelling up for you, or white label, and it was a failure. It was too, too smoky, too strong for the Japanese palate at the time, or so it is said. That's the reason. It wasn't until the release of Suntory's Kakabin, which again is still sold today, you know, the whiskey of the salary man and my favorite for highballs not for everyone but i just think it's the classic highball whiskey base in 1937 that suntory had a hit on his hands kakaba means square bottle so anyway that's just a brief history of shinjiro tori next up i'm going to do masataka takatsuru's journey of course there's a little bit more to it because you know there's the story of what a little bit of what he did in scotland where he where he studied whiskey production, but uh, there we go, Japanese whiskey at the beginning. Take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part two. Bye for now.